Good evening, Booktube. I just looked on my YouTube channel and it's been a day since I made a video so I can make another video. I wasn't going to make a video if it's been like 22 hours or 10 hours. I don't want to be a, uh, what's the word? I don't like making videos all the time every 24 hours. Here in West Michigan, it is March the 4th. It is 9.43 at night. So Wednesday, tomorrow's a Thursday. I got a phone call this afternoon from a booktube volunteer. His name is David. He wanted to know if I could cover his shift tomorrow from one to three and that he would cover my shift Friday from 10 to 1. So I, he had something, he had some procedure or something. So I said, sure. So tomorrow I go to the book took, book took, book nook, our local library used bookstore from 1 to 3. And then tomorrow night we meet with my wife's younger brother and his wife and her sister-in-law for dinner. This is kind of like her younger brother wanted to treat her and us to a birthday dinner. Well, Carol's birthday was way back in January, but this is the only time that we could finally arrange to get together for a birthday dinner. So we do that tomorrow night at six o'clock. So I go to the book nook and then I have dinner with Carol's younger brother and his wife and her sister-in-law. Yeah, last year her older brother, he died. So now her sister-in-law is a widow. Carol has a older sister that lives in the state of New York. So anyway, uh, this video, well, first of all, I still been reading Opaloid, Op Opaloid, Indiana by Brian Allen Carr. Been reading that today. I'm giving uh, William T. Voldman, the lucky star, a little break. I got in the mail yesterday uh, two books I had pre-ordered last year. The Age of Surveillance, Capitalism, The Fight for the Human Future of the New Frontier of Power by Sashana Zaboff. Can't pronounce her name. She's a, there's a picture of her in the back. She is the author of three books, each which each which singled singled the start of a new epic and technological society. In the late 1980s, in the age of the smart machine, foresaw how computers would re revolutionize the modern workplace. At the dawn of the 21st century, the support economy that she wrote. She wrote the, in the age of the smart machine. Then she wrote the smart, smart, not the smart, the support economy predicted the rise of digitally distributed capitalism of service tailored to the individual. Today, the age of surveillance capitalism reveals a world in which techno technology users are no longer customers but the raw material for an entirely new industrial system. So that's what we are as people. We are now, as we are now the raw material for an entirely new industrial system. Doesn't that just make you feel all warm inside? Knowing that you're just raw material for an entirely new industrial system? So I got that in the mail. And then uh, one of my favorite writers uh, is Robert Stone. 
and there's a biography coming out this month on his life by Madison Smart Bell. But he came out with this early, this came out before the biography. The I Sees with, the I You See with, selected nonfiction Robert Stone. So I was reading this a little bit last night. So I got that. I look forward to getting the biography. I have all of Robert Stone's writings in my main study. I thought about getting them all out, but I think I've shown those in the past. So today was a really nice day. It was a little cold, but I visit local thrift stores. I visit Bibles to Mexico, Action House, and Goodwill. First, I went to Action House and I found this biography on Edward uh, Monroe, Moreau, Edward Morrow, Edward R. Morrow, American original by Joseph E. Persisco. He was a very famous journalist. Uh, the legend of Edward R. Maro, Maro, was that Maro? Can't I can't remember how to how to pronounce it. Monroe Maro, probably the most brilliant and influential radio and television journalist ever, continues to intrigue millions of Americans some two decades after his death. This came out in, this biography came out in 1988. In this probing new biography, uh, Joseph Persisco skillfully examines the many facets of this complex, contradictory man. Persisco was able, Persisco was able to draw on many indispensable sources, including papers, letters, family notebooks, diaries, and photographs from the private collection, collection of Moreau's, Monroe's, Monroe's widow, Janet. The author spent many hours interviewing Mrs. Moreau, Moreau as well as such key players as William Paley, founder of CBS, the late Charles Collinswood, John Keith, Keith Gabroth, Fred Friendly, Eric Surad, and Howard F. Smith. Anyway, I like reading biographies of newspaper men, journalists, reporters. So I had picked up a couple of weeks ago this hardback of Edward R. Monroe, Moreau, Moreau. This is London. This is his diary when he was in London during the bombing, when the Nazis were bombing London back there in the Second World War. So I picked this up. And then I picked up this by S.J. Paris. Heresy, an Elizabethan thriller. I just picked up her other novel, Sacrilege. This is an Elizabethan tr thriller. So it was only a quarter. And then I, uh, at the book nook, a young fellow came in looking for J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. And so I found this, I thought if he, I told him to come in Maybe one would come in. Anyway, I found this for him today for a quarter. This has the whole complete trilogy in here. And then I picked up a book, a biography on Nirvana, the, the band Nirvana. Come As You Are, The Story of Nirvana by Michael Hazard. As you all know, I, I did a video a long time ago on, my, on Nirvana, uh, the, the grunge band, punk, hard rock. So I got this for my Nirvana collection. And then I picked up this book, Blood, Sweat and Tears, The Evolution of Work 
by Richard Dawkin. I collect books on, you know, economics, labor. I like cultural studies. And there was, it looks at different aspects of work, labor, and uh, I don't know, looked interesting. It was only 60 cents. And then I picked up this play by Eugene O'Neill, A Long Day's Journey into the Night, and a, a, a new forward by Harold Bloom. I like biographies of American biographies, 19th century biographies, 20th century biographies, and this is on Emily Post, uh, daughter of the Gilded Age, mistress of American manners. We know she wrote that uh, that book on etiquette by Emily Post. Uh, so I picked this up. Then I picked this novel up by Sally Buman, The Visitors. It's about these British women in Egypt in the 1920s. And then I picked up George Eliot, three novels, Middlemarch, Salias, Mariner, and Amos Barton. And then lastly, I picked up this hardback, The World That Never Was, The True Story of Dreamers, Schemers, Anarchists, and Secret Agents by Alex Butterworth. So, I picked these up today. I got all these books for $4. You know, you can't go wrong for $4. I, I did look at this book on Nirvana. I went downstairs this afternoon and looked for my books on Nirvana. I got a biography on the band Nirvana. I have Kurt Cobain's diaries. I have all kinds of music by the Nirvana. Uh, yeah. I have a biography of Kurt Cobain. So, so now I got this Lord, I'll take this to the book nook tomorrow and leave it for that young fellow. Hope he'll come in, pick it up. So I picked up Eugene O'Neill. I have his letters downstairs, I think. Eugene O'Neill's letters. Heresy by S.J. Perros. An Elizabethan thriller. And the biography on Edward Morrow. An American original. So those are things I picked up today just around where I live. And I came home and I just fiddle farted around all day, you know, watched booktube videos and read, fed the birds, wrote in my diary. That's about it. I look forward to getting that biography on Robert Stone, which should be coming out pretty, I, th I think it said in my Amazon, it comes out on March the 17th. So. And yeah, the age of surveillance capitalism. We are, as I said, we are, uh, Raw material for an entirely new industrial system. <laughs> yeah, it's an impersonal. You might feel like you're just nothing in this information civilization that we live in. The wasteland. So anyway, I hope you're having a good week. I thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments and... Uh, so nothing else really going on. You know, one thing I keep thinking about, I always think about, I always have this head trip going through my mind all the time. What will I be thinking after I'm dead? <laughs> I always used to think, well, when I'm dead, I'm going to be thinking about, about the Bible. I'll be thinking about Jesus Christ and 
uh, thinking about Reformed theology, thinking about all the blessings of the Lord and all His goodness and thinking about my wife and my family and my grandchildren and those are the kind of things that be, will preoccupy my mind. But then lately, I find myself thinking about all my sinful things I've done in my life. All those, all those wicked things I've done, all those horrible things I've done. That those would be on my mind too if I was dead. <laughs> and what horrible thing that would be to have throughout eternity, you're standing in this the pit of hell th with all remembering all the horrible things that you thought or said or did and uh, that really freaks me out because I think well I just want to praise Jesus throughout eternity you know I want to live in the the worship of God but then I tell myself well if you really want to do that and that's what you want to do why aren't you doing it now? I mean, it would seem logical that if I really want to worship God throughout eternity, that I would do that now. I would go to church on Sunday. I would keep the Sabbath day holy. I would, uh, I would be among God's people, the elect, the covenant people of God, singing the praises of the Lord instead of just sitting in this house being freaked out about what I'll be thinking about if I was in the bottomless pit. So I don't know. One thing else is that kind of bothers me these days is I don't feel nothing. I noticed that lately that I just feel kind of numb inside. I feel kind of, I just don't feel anything. I just don't. I feel exhausted. I feel tired. That's about it. I mean, I don't feel jubilant. I don't feel excited. I don't feel fiery. I don't feel... I just feel kind of blah. Is that because I don't exercise? I'm not walking. I don't have enough fresh air. I'm not eating right. I'm not getting enough sleep. I don't know. So that's what I do. I, I, I wander this little house. Well, we have a nice big house and these things just go around my mind. I think I've been spending too much time inside my brain. But I read, I write, and I wait to find out what's on the other side. So once again, I do pray you're all doing well, having a good week, and tomorrow's a Thursday, then we have a Friday and a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah, and life just keeps speeding by. And I hope that you don't get this plague that is sweeping the world, that you stay healthy and strong. Wash your hands. Don't cough on anybody. Don't go to work if you're feeling feverish so yeah so once again have a, hope you're having a good week have a good night until next time bye